scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Glory to the name of the Lord. And we thank the Lord for his grace. Thank the Lord for his faithfulness. This is our final session together. Let's lift our hands to heaven and ask the Lord to visit us again. Is someone thanking the God of heaven? Speak to my heart. Give me an encounter. Let grace be deposited upon my spirit man for a life of exploits the bible says for everyone that asketh receiveth someone is asking by faith and asking in faith for in jesus mighty name we pray hallelujah i want to really say thank you again to the man of god dr emos fenwa Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, there are not many, I must confess, and I'll tell you this, there are not many people within his age range of ministry that have the flexibility and the fluidity to maintain their core call and yet be flexible to embrace other dimensions, particularly, um, I think it's something that is worthy of commendation. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. And the privilege of relationship that I have with him, I've been touched and even humbled by his, for want of word, his childlike passion for knowledge, for truth and improvement. If it means him learning from a child, he will learn from a child regardless the age difference. That is profound humility profound wisdom profound leadership hallelujah and we sincerely honor you for this in the name of jesus christ i just felt stirred to also do this i want to say thank you particularly to all the workers who stand by the man of god in this church and lift up his hands you see I'm a leader myself and I know that your vision is as potent as the people that stand with you and stand by you. While I sat down watching the, um, the worship team, I could see the sincerity of their zeal. It was not mechanical, it was with passion, it was in truth. Um, I'm taking time to say these things because I'm hoping that some leader will learn you are as powerful as the people that stand with you the lord gave the word great was the company of them that published it the bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor when god raises people to stand with you do not become too proud to acknowledge their contribution and you do it once you do it again the human spirit functions by motivation when people know that their contributions are being recognized and rewarded then clear the stage and see them give their best and give their all one more time let's give it up to all the workers 
in this global ministry. Amen. Are you ready? So we'll be spending a few minutes as I charge us on this final session. And let me pray that and ask that you open up your heart. Every moment in God's presence is a moment of encounter. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. I'm teaching very briefly on the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. Let me encourage you to make reference to all the teachings for this conference but particularly the sessions that we've had together the ministers conference if you can have access to the teaching and then yesterday night's teaching just a quick recap i taught us yesterday that there are two components to building and manifesting bible faith number one the bible says take heed what you hear hallelujah please allow me honor a great man of god and a great friend in ministry Reverend Ike Wednesday, thank you so much. Such an honor to see you. Thank you. Hallelujah. And so the Bible talks about taking heed what you hear. Remember the teaching yesterday? And I said that your faith is built based on the correctness of the spiritual information you have access to. Not the spirituality of the information. And information can be spiritual and yet wrong. The potency of faith is built upon the rightness and the correctness of the information. Hallelujah. The Bible says that you be careful lest what you call light be darkness. So it's possible to hold on to what you call a body of truth, a body of knowledge, but it is not true light. I like how the Bible puts it. It says, that was the true light that lighted every man. That means there are other kinds of lights including false lights and you know they are false because the potency that should come with light is not administered in the presence of real life situation so the bible tells us to be mindful of the accuracy of the information that builds our conviction hallelujah there is a construct of spiritual knowledge that empowers the believer to walk by faith not every spiritual information sustains the ability to plant faith in your spirit there is an exact body of light that builds the believer the second component we looked at yesterday the bible says be careful how you hear so not just what you hear the correctness of the information but how you hear your attitude and your response Paul was speaking to the Hebrew church and he says, There remaineth a rest for the people of God. He says, For the gospel was preached unto us like it was to them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. There is always a response. Jesus was looking at the disciples at, you know, the sea while he walked on water, and Peter said, if it be thou, bid me come. And he never said, Peter, come. He just said, come. That means whoever responded was the one who will receive the miracle. In this case, only Peter took the step. So only Peter had the opportunity to experience what walking on water was. Hallelujah. So most people do not respond to the word of God. They hear, they are excited, but they do not respond. The miracle happens at the point of response, not at the point of hearing. Listen, faith is built at the point of hearing, but the miracle happens at the point of obedience. One more time. Faith is built at the point of hearing, but the miracle happens at the point of your response. Jesus told the ten lepers, he says, be on your way and go and show yourself to the priest. If you believe, the Bible says, as they went, not before they went not while they were thinking not while they said yes sir as they went they discovered that a miracle began to happen john chapter 2 same experience get six pots together the wedding in cana of galilee and the bible says as they went the water began to turn to wine hallelujah the miracle happens at the point of your obedience so bible faith demands that number one you hear correctly Number two, that you respond accurately. And like I illustrated yesterday, 
the proof of hearing is accurate response if i ask you to come and you sit i assume you did not hear me are we together now the accuracy of your response is proof that you heard well prayer is connected to manifesting bible faith mark chapter 11 23 and 24 mark chapter 11 so the story behind this scripture is that jesus came hungry and he saw a fig tree the fig tree was very alluring and when he came to the fig tree he found out it was full of leaves but no fruit and sad about the situation he cursed it for taking from the earth and not producing fruit very strangely and by the next day when they came they found out it had withered the disciples were surprised and said wow you said this and this happened then jesus said i say unto you whoever says to this mountain i'm reading from new king james be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that those things he says will be done he says he will have whatsoever i'm used to kjv my apologies if if you see me looking but reading from my mind i'm already used to kjv king james language hallelujah then verse 24 says therefore i say unto you king james says what things soever ye desire when ye pray can we have kjv what things soever ye desire he says when ye pray please look up so the bible talks about your desire your expectation connects it to prayer then he says believe that thou receivest them and he says thou shall have them one more time what things soever ye desire when you pray so your desire connects to prayer connects to believing connects to receiving connects to having this is how the bible teaches desire prayer believing receiving having you can never have what you have not received you only have what you have received because receiving is a spiritual reality having is when that reality that you have received is now made manifest what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that means if you want to be a person of faith exploits by faith you cannot divorce your exploits of faith and by faith to the ministry of prayer please walk with me and let's go to the book of james james chapter 5 very profound scripture a nice discourse on prayer was done right from chapter 13 and it stretches down to about 18 19 but for the sake of time we'll just pick a few scriptures very quickly so the bible says in verse 13 is any among you afflicted it says let him pray is any merry let him sing psalms uh-huh 14 it says is any sick among you lend me your attention now let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him so he's saying that there is a kind of prayer that can be said over the afflicted even the sick anointing him with oil in the name of the lord let's shout verse 15 together if you're a christian ready one to read and the prayer of faith hold on please hold on please hold on please the fact that he specified the kind of prayer meant not every kind of prayer produces the effect desired. He said the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord in honor to that prayer of faith shall raise him up. I like this one. You don't have to be sick to be raised up. Once you are down, you need to be raised up. The prayer of faith does not just heal the sick. It can raise any man up and if he had committed sins he said they shall be forgiven him hallelujah the prayer of faith the prayer of faith so the bible also tells us in james chapter 4 let's look at it please there is something called praying amiss have you stumbled across that in scripture that an individual can pray but he will pray amiss that was the challenge of jesus's disciples i told you yesterday that there are many questions the disciples asked jesus but two of them are outstanding number one teach us to pray number two increase our faith 
they confronted Jesus head on with these questions and the disciples were frustrated their issue was not prayerlessness their issue was inefficiency in prayer they noticed that there was a way Jesus prayed over sick people there was a way he prayed over situations and circumstances there was a, a, a way he prayed over the issues of concern at the time and they saw the results that follow immediately and they attempted to pray in like manner and nothing happened so they came with humility and said please teach us to pray as john taught his disciples to pray then jesus began to do a discourse on prayer james now is teaching us that a believer can be prayerful and yet your prayer can be impotent and the reason why the prayer of the believer becomes impotent is because the believer can be prayerful but that there is a possibility that that believer can pray amiss are we learning from whence cometh wars and fighting among you come they not thence even from your lusts that war in your members verse 2 ye lost and have not ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain ye fight and war ye have not because you ask not you know what james is saying here he's saying all the bitterness and jealousy the fighting and the quarreling are unnecessary because the prayer platform is an equalizer it gives everybody an opportunity to have their desires met that means coveting another person's reality or testimony and getting angry about it is unnecessary that there is a provision in the spirit where anything you desire can become yours so he's saying you fight and you quarrel you ask and then you receive not did you ever read that it's possible to ask and yet will not receive he says because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your loss very quickly what makes prayer a prayer that is amiss i just want to talk about that very quickly number one the first thing that makes prayer amiss is praying without the backing of scripture praying without the backing of scripture is praying amiss sociological emotional lamentation is not prayer praying outside of the backing of scripture is praying amiss are we together because like you were taught yesterday Genesis chapter 21 and verse 1. God does not do what we want. He only does what he says. So when you align what you want to what he says, it will look like God is answering you. But God is honoring himself. Are we together now? And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. If God has not spoken, are we together now? the modus operandi of the kingdom does not allow that god does what he did not say so god's word precedes his action genesis chapter 1 the bible says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth now the earth was void formless and darkness hovered around the face of the deep then the bible says verse 3 and elohim said and god said light be and the bible says there was light and he saw that it was good so that's always the protocol god says it and then he does it god says it and then it is made manifest so praying amiss is praying without scriptural backing this is very profound most people assume that just because they are talking to god and they mean what they are saying god is obliged to answer them that does not work that way hallelujah there are many many people who prayed in the bible and their prayers were not answered once you do not back your prayer with the word you do not back your prayer with scripture you are praying amiss number two what makes prayer praying amiss any desire that violates the way the kingdom operates will not be answered humorously sometimes when i teach on this i talk about people praying that god destroys um, his enemies 
let God arise and let his enemies be scattered before you pray that prayer verify who is God's enemy do you know who God's enemy is God's enemy is not the person you hate God's enemy is not the person you don't like God's enemy is anybody who makes himself a consistent interruption to God's program even if that is you so when you pray and say let God arise and let all his enemies it is possible to be in that list you doubt me ask Jonah the fact that you fight the will of God, even if it's for that moment, makes you his enemy. Anything that is anti-Christ is God's enemy. Anything. Not anyone. Anything. Are we together? So when you pray with a motif that is wrong, that was the singular reason based on my study and in my opinion, why the prayer of Hannah was not answered. The goal was not having a child that fulfills the purposes of God. The goal was a competition trying to have just like Penina and it was not enough for heaven to move on our behalf. So the issue was not having a child. The issue was wanting to feel like a woman just like Penina because of the mockery. You would think God would be moved by her tears and the years kept multiplying and it looked like heaven was silent. One day she changed her motif paraphrasing lord you are looking for a prophet let my womb produce one she prayed once not twice once and the child came so when you come to god and say lord i want money i want ministry i want anointing i want this there is one question heaven will echo back to you why if you cannot answer that question why you will not get an answer from heaven because everything created by God was designed to serve his purposes. Everything created by God, everything that secures God's attention and support must serve his purposes. Are we together? So praying amiss, number one, without scriptural backing. Number two, with a corrupted motif. Corrupted motif. And then finally, number three. What makes prayer? amiss praying without faith that means without the willingness to obey god there are many things god mandates that we do to commit him but most believers will prefer to go through the sacrifice the burden of shouting over heaven than to take that action of faith for instance there is no amount of prayer that will substitute for obedience there is no amount of prayer that will substitute for obedience. If God gives you an instruction and say, bring you a seed to your father in the Lord. And you say, Lord, rather than giving him the seed, let me fast for two days. You will fast and it's just your spiritual life that will improve. But that result you want to get, you will not get it. Obedience indeed is better than sacrifice. There are many, many believers who prefer to pray in replacement to obedience and the reason is because uh in prayer you just dissipate energy but obedience many times will cost you it will cost you to part away with physical things hallelujah the bible says they heard the word just like we did but the word did not profit them not be mixed with faith can i tell you one of the major assignments of prayer is to help you know the will of god the moment the will of God is known, you obtain grace to walk in keeping with the conditions that commit God. Once your part is not played, you render the word impotent. Hallelujah. For instance, the Bible talks about diligence as a requirement for greatness. If you pray with a commitment to remain lazy, you are not going to have the prayer answered at best god will show you through dreams and visions that laziness is why you are there are we together now yeah prayer was not supposed to replace the various responsibility components that commit the believer as far as getting promises manifest i think it's a mistake that is done in church there are many people who perpetually live walk in 
disobedience and expect that just because they prayed it will automatically make that happen the bible says he that wants friends must show himself friendly if you're somebody who disregards people you have a lot of disdain for people pray the favor prayer you can as far as that will concern the answer will remain in the realm of the spirit because the human components that need to partner with the spirit of god you have ignored them and dishonor is the key that shuts any door are we together so when you pray outside of the provisions that scripture allows you are praying amiss number two when your motif is corrupted just to satisfy your lust there is no kingdom come contained in your desire there is no kingdom come there is nothing in your desire that glorifies jesus there is nothing in your desire that gives him praise there is nothing in your desire that sings his praises to the nations you will not secure answer from heaven and number three if you are praying without a commitment to obeying god or obeying the instructions that will come from that prayer there are many 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 people whose prayer remains impotent because it's a waste for the holy spirit to instruct them in the place of prayer because when god tells them the things to do they would not do it whatsoever he tells you to do john chapter 2 he says to do having the readiness to judge all disobedience he says when your obedience is complete are we learning now so this is very powerful i watch believers sincere believers who love the lord pray dissipating zeal and energy and you can see the mistakes that are made in prayer and sometimes i move with so much compassion because i know that these people are praying with zeal albeit without knowledge what makes your activities in the spirit powerful is the understanding that supports what you are doing the difference between giving and do, as donation and giving as a spiritual commitment that brings you a harvest of increase is understanding not just the seed when you carry a donation mentality there's no reward the reward is that people will have a good perception about you that they saw you dropping a seed but it will not reach heaven are we together so understanding is what gives strength to our spiritual activities you can dance just as a show and yet lose out on an opportunity to receive the blessings that come from such a powerful spiritual practice you can sing and it's just entertainment for you are we together now what gives life to the spiritual activities that we engage in is the understanding that supports what we're doing so before you act it's important that you educate yourself why am i doing this what is the revelation behind the things i'm doing i'm locking myself in the room and i am dancing before the lord what does this mean what blessing is connected to this obedience are we together i'm now emptying my account to bring my seat to church are you just doing it because you are frustrated or are you doing it because you have an understanding that no man outgives God? Hallelujah. Understanding is powerful. Jesus said, I will build my church upon this formula. That you have to understand first before you act. Who do men say that I am? And they said, you are this and that. And he said, this is ignorance. But what do you say? And Peter said, I know who thou art, thou art Christ, even the son of the living God. Understanding, understanding. It is the reason why two people can come and drop the same seed, the same amount, under the same condition, and even receive prophetic blessings from the man of God. One will go and return with testimonies, another person will return as if he never came to church. Oftentimes the difference is not the anointing that came upon them, not the size of the seed necessarily, but the understanding that supported what they did. Hallelujah. Praying amiss. I'm praying for you that from today, may your prayer produce power. Amen. Shout a louder amen. May your prayer amen. produce power. Amen. You may have heard me say, nobody leaves what works. The reason why many people plunge into prayerlessness is because they are frustrated by the repeated cycles of dissipating energy without corresponding testimonies. 
when you pray and it produces you will pray again am i right on that when you pray and it produces i was very touched when i saw the testimony of the six month uh, baby you know just smiling and crying at the same time enjoying i said my god look at this the power of prayer you don't want to spend time crying to a god that in your case looks like an idol because you are praying lord visit me nothing happens arise for me nothing happens okay forget about me and visit my child nothing happens everything you shout unto god and then you wrap up your prayer by saying amen and you walk out of that place knowing it will not be answered hallelujah do you know how powerful it is when everything you do produces results whatsoever he doeth prospers is that in your bible that includes your praying imagine how many people you want to see their conditions change that if you had the power through prayer to change their conditions and you've mastered the dynamics of potent functional and answered prayer you will pray and intercede with joy because you already have the hearts to see people's problems you know turned around but for most people we pray and pray and pray and nothing happens let me remind you again one last time if your prayer is not answered these are the three areas to check number one the word compliancy may be found wanting that you are just praying emotional prayers for instance father thank you you are the lion of the tribe of judah rose of sharon lily of the valley and most people don't even believe what they are saying they don't even know the implication of what they are saying if you pick just one of those attributes of god and you study it it will build your faith what does it mean to be the lion of the tribe of judah and after we wrap up all those things we say god i'm here again will you allow shame like this is this how my life is going to be now of course i know you are being sincere and sympathetic god that in my presence i'm watching all these my people this one that went to school when the, you are praying now the person now has a, a job the other day i was standing by the junction you are talking to god now and i saw this god you can't be doing all this kind of thing to me and then you say amen now let me be honest with you god is touched with the feelings of your infirmity he's called compassion but he's only moved by his word did you hear what i said god is touched with the feelings of your infirmity but he's bound himself to his word if god were not bound to his word nobody he died for who did not accept him will be in hell now his compassion will not allow them yet because the condition is that whoever receives the son has life whoever rejects the son has been condemned already so no matter how much he loves the sinner he will honor the sinners rejecting him even at the detriment of his eternal damnation this is how powerful god has bound himself to his word so if you think just because you are crying god will answer i want you to know that he still remains a god of love but you may be disappointed for a very long time church is quiet i assume the word is entering your spirit because i'm sure many people are just thinking ah so this is what i've been doing <laughs> praying outside of the scripture emotional sociological prayer a mix of wise sayings my father said nobody trouble me and the trouble you are talking to god no these things don't work that way pray like a believer a believer has been grafted into a new culture and there is a modus operandi that governs that culture are we together and then the bible says that we pray we have to examine our motif our motif our motif our motif god you gave this sister rapper give me two i'm watching you and god says no this is not how i walk if that is why you are here let's talk about something else but as far as the matter of a rapper is concerned forget it this is not how i give people rappers father i desire a covering to empower me to be able to reveal you more heaven says now you are speaking our language let's talk again is someone learning now 
this jealousy driven prayer and fasting does not produce result this envy driven prayer and fasting envy driven ministry envy driven pursuits god either give me the same thing or take away the other person's own the most important thing is let's be in the same position no. No. motif motif and then number three make sure you don't go to the place of prayer when you are not willing to obey god because oftentimes the real end point of your prayer is when divine instructions come and the moment instructions come the remaining part of that equation is at the mercy of your obedience if god tells you that the secret to your rising lord i'm trusting you for a job i'm trusting you to open up a door and then a rima word can come to you based on scripture and god gives you an instruction buy a basket of fruits and go and sow it as a seed to someone who just got a job now you had that that word god has already answered your prayer whether it will manifest or not it depends on your obedience and you say lord i won't buy a basket of fruit for anyone my ego will not allow me let's keep praying father in the name of jesus listen let me tell you um it doesn't work that way obedience is a powerful force did you hear what i said philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus who though being god equal with god the bible says did not consider it robbery are we together but that he shred he laid aside everything and came became a man died he was in the likeness of men and the bible says he died even the death of the cross on account of his obedience the bible says he was obedient unto death that is a realm of obedience Obe there is obedience unto inconvenience there is obedience unto shame there is obedience unto death that is the highest level of obedience obedience unto death there is obedience that does not kill you but just inconveniences you empty your account does not kill you but it's obedience unto inconvenience there is a reward connected to that the highest level of obedience that any man can manifest in this earth realm is this obedience unto death wherefore on account of this god hath so highly exalted him and given him an office a name that is above every other name let every other name fade away let every other name fade away till there's only you let every other name fade away you see when you sing songs like that this was the obedience that purchased that reality so when you go to pray and instructions come as rima you must obtain grace to obey and obey fast delayed obedience is disobedience in a measure because we walk based on the law of times and seasons you can obey god late and it will be equal to disobedience when he spoke to abraham genesis 22 he says take now your son your only son the bible says he arose early in the morning there is timing to obedience you don't obey when you want you obey when the word comes that is the reason why in the place of prayer among the many things you pray for is the doing grace the doing grace is what empowers the believer to take prompt action and reveal and redeem the time i hope god is helping us already we're still discussing praying amiss africa prays oh but most times we pray amiss that is the truth we pray sincerely but we pray amiss so the ratio of the energy dissipated to the results obtained from prayer is like putting a bucket in front of a tap and it's coming drop by drop so there are so many people waiting with their buckets and it will take one person over two weeks and yet that tap has the ability to fill up the bucket in less than a minute you see it matters that god answers you early the bible says satisfy me early with your mercy 
there is timing to the help of God are we learning now now let's consider what the prayer of faith is very quickly if you know what it means to pray amiss you should begin to already guess what it means to pray by faith and the prayer of faith will heal the sick and God will raise him up I know he was speaking in the context of healing but I like the other part that says God will raise him up the prayer of faith can raise a man up a weak man to be strong the poor to be blessed a limited man to be unlimited prayer makes the small great if it is the prayer of faith and the Lord shall raise him up and the Lord shall raise his business up raise his ministry up raise his influence up hallelujah I'm praying for you before we discuss this if there is anything that has kept you down in the name that is above all names that your life has been stunted limited by the power that raised Christ from the dead I speak over you that after today in the name that is above all names may you rise up beyond your imagination you will marvel and wonder at what the hand of God is able to do in the lives of men the prayer of faith can cause the Lord to raise him up to raise him up to raise him up but thou O oh Lord art a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh Lord are the shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head i like that part you're my glory the lifter up of my head he's my glory the lifter up of my head you are my glory the lifter up of my head God can add to a man till you become strong as a nation one man one man can have the strength of a nation when God helps you it says by God I can run through a troop and by my God I can leap over a wall listen behind the exploits of men is the jealousy of a mighty God that stands behind them as a mighty terrible one you define your possibilities in this kingdom when you are able to secure the attention of God. I quoted that scripture yesterday night. Have respect for the covenant. For the dark places of the earth are in a habitation of cruelty. The whole world lies in wickedness. There is no guarantee that people will indefinitely stand to support you support your ministry support what you stand for prophesy this song one more time you are my glory the lifter up of my head you are my glory the lifter up of my head. see the maker lifting you up you are my glory the lifter up of my head you are my glory, the lifter of my head. It is that same God and it is that same name that will finish up the payment of this building. It is that same God and that same name that will give children to the barren. It is that same God and that same name that will lift weak people in this church and make them strong and mighty like nations. It is that same God and that same name that will give visibility and power and grace to men you see let me tell you this men make boast in their knowledge men make boast in their achievements there are some of us that do not have that luxury the basis of the help of God the basis for everything good that God has done today is attributed directly to the help of God but I can tell you God can make a man 
become a nation he says in thee shall all genesis 12 3 in thee not from thee in thee connected to you because of you shall all the families of the earth be blessed that right from where you are here in this church in lagos somewhere that nobody knows you god is able to lift you listen when god decides to raise a man bar woe betides the force that stands against you then you will see the real power god is not just a lambo he's a lion he's a lion have you seen lions bring down great animals many times their size except that this one is the most high he's not a lion just because of attitude he's a lion because all power belongs to him i have spoken once and twice have you heard that power belongs to the lord the bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder i'm saying this because this is what must happen to you beginning from today now thanks be to god which causes us always leaping in ministry doesn't matter who likes you or doesn't like you once god stands behind you that force keeps pushing you keeps pushing you moving you from glory to glory moving you from grace to grace raising men to stand shifting systems and structures and compelling them to align to his purposes in your life he told joshua he said no man will be able to stand against you i thank god it was joshua he spoke to no man shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life he says today i will begin to magnify you in the sight of all egypt israel so that they will know that as i was with moses in one minute we're going to sing this song again you are my glory you are the lifter see yourself rising see yourself shining see yourself excelling regardless the courses regardless the yokes see your ministry gaining traction and visibility by the power of the holy spirit you're my glory the lifter up of my head you're my glory the lifter up Oh my glory, oh my glory, the my glory, oh my glory, That is God for you. When God decides to come to your family and holds your hand, that I will lift you. You see, many believers truly they do not know who God is many believers do not know who God is when God decides whatever would have been impossible possible then you make it easy so when you are saying you are my glory the lift her up he said many are they that rise up against me some three many are they that say where is your help but he says thou O Lord art a shield for me when God decides to help you, let me repeat it again. He makes things possible and makes things easy. Two things, possibility and ease. That is the assignment of help. So if you want to buy something and it is one million naira and you have 500,000, if I give you 500,000, I achieve two things. One, I made that purchase possible, but I made it easy. The help of God does not just make things possible. It makes things easy. Is your glory the lifter up of your head? You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. Remain my glory, the lifter up of my head. There are people here, 
it will not be up to one month you will come and stand on this altar and say look how god lifted me look how god changed my family look how god rewrote my story look how god gave me a voice god raised strangers please be seated for a few minutes i'm going to wrap up my session by making prophetic declarations but let me just show you something honestly i sense the water stirred in my spirit that someone you have come past a level for a long time don't make it look like god is not faithful it's time to be angry listen whatever you tolerate has the license to remain did you hear what i said whatever you tolerate has the license to remain your laxity to press for change is the authorization for tragedies to remain the day you get dissatisfied lord i cannot remain like this everything that is alive grows where is my growth as proof that i'm alive biology and spirituality both agree that when a thing is alive it grows so if it is true that you are alive where is the growth that attests to the fact that you are alive that is why you must cause the spirit of delay i've taught you that the classic character of delay is that the only thing that grows in your life is your age once the spirit of delay is upon you nothing else grows only your age there is no justification of your days by the corresponding accomplishments i want you to be tired today while you are listening to me we came here to release our faith if it is not working don't keep quiet did you hear what i said if it is not working don't keep quiet say it after me if it is not working it says give him no rest until he establishes jerusalem now what does it mean to pray the prayer of faith number one what does it mean to pray the prayer of faith number one the prayer of faith is scripture based prayer write it down the prayer of faith is scripture based prayer why do we pray scripture based prayer numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 god is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent god is not a man that he should lie he is not the son of man that he should repent hath he said it and shall he not do it had he spoken and shall he not make it good god is not a man number two i like this psalm 138 and verse 2 mm. psalm 138 and verse 2 psalm 132 8 verse 2 let's read together i will worship towards your holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth why for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy names you have lifted and exalted your word that means when i pray word compliant scripture based prayer i have a guarantee by the spirit that god will not be tampered by any biases or emotions he's exalted and magnified his word even above his name scripture based prayer never pray and ask anything without presenting the scriptural basis that commits god father i'm bringing before you my rent what is the basis i will tell you the bible says watch this if ye being evil he was speaking to fathers know how to give good gifts to your children now you come as a child and say lord i am your child you are father the proof of fatherhood according to scripture is the ability to give are we together now yes oh i know that i was careless i went and did whatever it is 
I went to go and use the money for my rent to celebrate a birthday party. Now I am in trouble. Father, your word says that your mercy triumphs over judgment. It says your mercies are new every morning. Your judgments are not new every morning. I come before you in repentance and sincerity. I have been careless, but I ask for your mercy, for your namesake. You are praying Bible-based, scripture-based prayer. Your child returns from school and it looks like things are not working. He's failing in the exams. Beating the child, kicking the child, getting angry, getting frustrated and say, God, this is your child. That's not how it works. Carry Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. God, you said my seed shall be mighty. This does not look like might. This looks like shame or reproach. I petition this child on account of the integrity of your word. This is how believers pray. This is prayer that produces results. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? You are a pastor and you are leading people. You are not seeing great people rise from your congregation. Go to God in prayer. Genesis 17 and verse 6. Lord, there is a covenant with you that greatness will come out of me. Genesis 17 and verse 6. Media help us please. It says, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful. And I will make nations of thee. And things not shall come to thee. Shall come out of thee. You carry that and do a three days retreat with it. And you will watch somebody will tell you, I got a job with a multinational. Another person, I established a business in six months. It's been global. God is not honoring your word. He's honoring his word that you have made your word. Listen, this is the secret to mighty testimonies that you see. I vowed before God that I will never raise a weak people. And it's not because I'm Joshua Selman. This is one of the anchor scriptures. hallelujah it looks like everybody is forgetting you people are not remembering you go to god in prayer and cry that night could not king ahazaroth sleep he said bring me the chronicles and he said this person has done this what has been done to him and they said nothing and a book of remembrance was open you cry before god and you say, I've been part of the testimony of many people. Lord, they have, for, they have forgotten me. He said, the keeper of Israel, he does not sleep, neither slumbers. Ah! And the wine presser said before Pharaoh, I remember my wrong this day. So it is wrong to forget those who help you. Did you hear what I said? It is a wrong that he remembered. I remember my wrong. That this person was the one praying with me. Now I, I got a job and for five years I have not even remembered him to say take for tea and bread. He didn't say I remember. I remember my wrong. It is wrong. This is how we command results in destiny. Prayer becomes exciting when you are praying scripture. When you are praying nonsense it will just frustrate you. And you will be clear that your prayer will not be answered. Take time to write scriptures. Don't just shout. And God has helped people to put the scriptures for you. At least two or three scriptures. Go to God in fasting. Go to God praying. Lock your door. This church is not growing. Father, you are the God of increase. You are the God of increase. I will multiply them. They shall not be few. I will glorify them. They shall not be small. That becomes your scripture. Oh, they are not coming because the place is far. It's a lie. Where was the ark of Noah when the animals found their way to the ark? The ark of Noah was placed in one position and the animals left everywhere. Noah did not know where the animals were, but there was an anointing that compelled them. It's called anakazo. It's a grace that compels. It said, go to the highway and the byways and compel them to come that my house may be full listen i hope you don't mistake what we're doing for pride but let me tell you this if you don't live like this i assure you you'll be frustrated this thing is not magical this is how you walk your salvation with fear and trembling 
work out your salvation you are trusting God for a property beyond your savings let me just give this advice beyond your savings no matter how much money you have you can have the money and the owner will say I will not give you there are many things money cannot do Psalm 44 and verse 3 somebody has received the revelation for his property this year Psalm 44 and verse 3 they got not the land in possession by their own sword neither did their own arm save them but thy right hand and thine arm and the light of your countenance because thou hast a favor towards them someone just looks at you and says i'm working in the land office i just feel like including your name for an allocation and you will think it's one small land that looks like a kiosk you will be given and you will never see the person again if you think you have to know those who help you save johnny did you hear what i said it takes a long time to know one person and yet you need many people cumulatively to help you so the bible says strangers shall feed your flock when you are praying for help it must come from both known and unknown people abraham did not know abimelech but in one night it was abimelech that caused abraham to prosper he wanted to take his wife and god said if you touch that woman you are dead by the next day all the blessings of abraham was a peace offering for apology so you can meet with somebody who does not know you and say something is making me bless you tell the person you are right you don't know what i did in my room that something has a name Do you believe what I'm saying? Yes. I believe it. Believe this. One day you stand up and you are just walking in your room prophetically. Everywhere the soles of your feet treads upon. You are doing it in your room. Oh. Don't worry that the room is just a two by two or four by. Don't mind the devil. You just do what I'm telling you to do. Walking around by the spirit. Sanaka parako siata. You come to do ministry in a city and they tell you there are forces that the ministry does not survive one, two, three years. Don't you know what to do? You don't confront forces on the pulpit. You confront forces in the secret place. The pulpit is a place for manifestation. Don't stand on the pulpit and that's when you are shouting at the spirits to hear you. It's too late. You deal with it in a secret place. The controlling powers across this territory. Hear the word of the Lord. The Bible says, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. If I come by myself, I shouldn't be blessed. But because I come in the name of the Lord. Is that not in your Bible? I'm showing you the prayer of faith. Word compliant prayer that produces power. The triumphant entry of Jesus they said bless Hosanna in the highest the triumphant entry is the testimony of anybody who comes in the name of the Lord when you come in the name of the Lord the proof that you come in the name of the Lord is that there must eventually be a triumphant entry there was nothing that was used in that triumphant entry that was a personal property of Jesus not the leaves not the men not the donkey he just came in the name of the Lord and provisions followed to make sure that the entry was triumphant don't say I don't have money I don't have this I don't have that no the invisible things are the mothers of the visible things everything visible is a child the name of the mother that gave birth to it is the spirit realm the resources that you have are beyond the things that you see don't be deceived by the amount in your account whether you say it correctly or not you are still wrong if what you have is 10 million and you say i have 10 million you are still wrong do you believe this i'm sharing with you my life sincerely under god this is what i do in the secret place by the spirit of god get angry in your spirit stop pampering the devil around your destiny i told you when satan comes he does not come to discuss he does not come to advise when he comes he will kill he will steal he will destroy one more time 
he will steal he will kill he will destroy everybody begins to hate you in the place of work that's an affliction what did the bible say to do when you are afflicted pray you are just discussing it with people who cannot help you what is making my general manager hate me direct superior hate me even the cleaners hate me no i'm a spiritual man i know this is not a sign of the favor of god something is wrong and you return back home somebody says can we come and watch a movie sorry another time please you lock your door thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over lord what I told you if you are not from this you are not from that no no every good and perfect gift cometh from above watch this it comes from the father of lights i caught a revelation of god as the father of spirits that's a very dangerous name every human being is first a spirit if you are not a spirit you cannot be called man you first have to be spirit that is trapped in a body so when god calls himself the father of spirit he can manipulate any human spirit to achieve his purposes even if you are pharaoh so when someone beats his chest and say over my dead body he's made a big mistake leave the person and go to the father of spirits the one who turned men to beasts to show that he's a ruler upon the earth arguing with men is a waste of time we wrestle not against flesh and blood you know the scripture but have you been using it this is what i'm teaching you it is not just an awareness of it it is when you engage i'm teaching you the prayer of faith shall heal the sick and it shall raise men up the prayer of faith hallelujah i have audio recordings of different scriptures sometimes i can sit down and just play them scriptures on lifting scriptures on healing scriptures on influence scriptures on power pay the price and bring them together while others are sleeping we're awake thou shalt be exalted above all the nations of the earth no nation will reject me there is a grace upon me no nation there is a mandate that has proceeded above and ahead of me this is what i believe i told you yesterday or was yes yesterday it's impossible for everybody to hate you even satan is not hated by everybody i said it yesterday terrorists have wives a woman who saw him as a terrorist and say yes i'm going to marry you and robbers have wives everybody cannot hate you you have just been meeting the wrong people it's not your assignment to find the right people you are guided the steps of a good man talk to me believers are ordered by who let me tell you something when god wants to give you visibility one of the things that god does is to change your audience to the right people there are many gifted people but because you are positioned around the wrong people it is painful when you are gifted but the people hearing you are not the ones mandated to bless you they will disregard what you carry no matter how much you carry it there are ceos today that are are global in potential but the people around their lives do not have the capacity to discern recognize nor honor what they carry everybody you see lifted came across this miracle of being repositioned to the right people let me tell you how visibility happens god brings you to the audience that have been praying for your grace yes sir whether you're in music ministry whether you're in word ministry don't ignore what i'm saying you will suffer in life and ministry honestly if you ignore it it's true somebody looks at you and says does this not look like the person we have been praying for and don't say there are many people that's not your business your possibilities are defined by your faith and conviction don't say there are many people no someone can look at you and say based on this you look like the secretary i've been praying for and then the person now says how much should i give you and god says keep quiet you would have said two hundred thousand. the person says can you manage 2.5 and you almost want to fall down 
but because of how the person perceives you the person will think listen when you get into the atmosphere of the right people they will perceive you sometimes to a point of flattery you will think they are lying to you believe what i'm telling you this is how god lifted me up. once upon a time with all of course i know that everybody has that face you can go somewhere where you are not honored and appreciated is as you are climbing the bike going they will bring out your norodium like a bribe and squeeze it in a 2a exercise book and say please as you are going here eh? thank you but when god wants to help a man god puts together the audience that have both the resources and the recognition of what god has given you and god will flaunt you like a trophy in the presence of your helpers and that becomes the end of it you will never go to the prison again let me prophesy over someone in the name that is above all names i'm praying for you may god reposition you to the right people may my god reposition you to the right audience may my god reposition you to the right people hallelujah i have five minutes let's tie this up what is the prayer of faith so number one please be seated word based word compliant scripture based prayer number two what is the prayer of faith the prayer of faith is prayers in accordance to the revealed will of god prayers that is in accordance to the revealed will of god first john 5 14 and 15 please prayers that is in accordance to the revealed will of god according to scripture one of the ways that we redeem time is to know the will of god the bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise redeeming the time and that by knowing what the will of god is let's read this scripture one to read please and this is the confidence we have in him according to his will hcc shouts he say according to, according to his will say according to his will yes according to his will that is the missing link for many people's prayer they pray but it's not according to his will this is the confidence we have that if we ask anything according to his will he hear at us verse 15 it says and if and if we know that he heareth us whatsoever we ask we also know that we have the petitions that we desired of him what is the prayer of faith praying in accordance to the revealed will of god is it the will of god to heal you do you believe that do you have a scripture for it then you can pray demanding healing is it the will of god to bless you do you believe that you see before you ask anything verify if your prayer request is consistent with the will of god verify where it is not everything about your desire that is stated directly in scripture that is the advantage of praying in the spirit every time the revealed will is unknown you pray in the spirit until the spirit who searches the mind of god when he reveals to you the will of god there must be a scripture that connects to his will that you now know are we together it is not everything you desire that is directly written in scripture there is no name lagos in scripture there is no name for where your house will be in scripture lord where am i going to be that's where the prayer language comes you stay and um, the moment you begin to pray in the spirit the bible tells us that the spirit of god is a wisdom of god that he has a unique ministry to search the mind of the father and he can transport to your understanding that which is consistent with the will of god he's able to reveal and help you know the things that are freely given but once the will of god the knowledge of that will is revealed the next thing is to switch back to word compliant prayer hallelujah number three and i end here what is the prayer of faith hmm. the prayer of faith is persistent prayer 
persistent prayer prayer that does not stop till the answers arrive james 5 17. the prayer of faith is not a one-time prayer is a prayer of is a prayer that holds on knowing that it may take time but that the word of god will surely be made manifest elijah was a man subject to us is still the same flow of scripture explaining to you what the prayer of faith is that the bible later calls a fervent and effectual prayer that avails much he says elijah was a man subject to like passion as we are the bible says he prayed earnestly this is one definition of the prayer of faith the prayer that is prayed earnestly persistence consistence that it might not rain and the bible says it rained not on the earth by a space of three years and six months next verse the bible says and he prayed again and he prayed again and he prayed again he prayed in january he still prayed in february he still prayed in march again is what makes any prayer the prayer of faith you pray again you pray again you pray again you pray again do not think you're praying again is a sign of unbelief it's not true it depends on what you are saying jesus prayed repeating the same words again repeating the same words pray again in luke chapter 18 and verse 1 the bible says he spake this parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint then the bible gives us a very interesting scenario that there was a man who did not fear God nor regard men may you never meet such a man a man that doesn't fear God and a man that does not regard men that is a dangerous man I say it again may you not meet such a person then the Bible says there was a very frail widow what does it mean all her support systems had left her from a physical standpoint she did not have much the bible says she came to him saying avenge me mine adversary verse 4 the bible says for a while he would not do that but afterwards he said to himself though i fear not god nor regard man verse 5 he says yet this widow troubled me and how does she trouble him i will avenge her less by her continual coming He's teaching the character of prayer that works. That this is a frail woman with no ability to fight this man physically. But she used the power of persistence. The Bible says give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem as a praise. Is it alright to pay for something for one year, for two years? Ask Abraham for 25 years. And the Bible says and after he patiently endured, he obtained the promise persistence in the spirit is a sign of stamina is proof you still believe God and the prayer of faith shall heal the sick and the Lord shall raise him up please rise up on your feet please rise up on your feet we are wrapping up I want to speak over your life. I share the burden that is in the heart of God's servant to see you produce results. This conference is called Exploits, even of faith and by faith. God wants us to produce potent results. He is glorified. You have tabernacled here from the start of this conference, wrapping up tomorrow. And I want you to pray one more prayer. Just one more prayer. Father, give me an evidence. Let there be an evidence in my life that you have visited me. Go ahead and pray. Let there be an evidence in my life. Let there be an evidence.
Hello. Scriptures exalt us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.